Hello and welcome everybody. This is Abdullah, co-founder of Silverline Community and your host to the Mean Who podcast, the show that sheds light on the movers, shakers and shapers of the creative and cultural industries. We are here today launching our first series of The Makers with legendary Marwan Hamid. Every director's debut is referred to as an experiment, a term that is used to describe the director's attempt of testing his abilities and talent in filmmaking. One of the most notable traits in Marwan Hamid's early works is his bravery in experimenting, especially when adapting successful and sophisticated literary works. What makes Hamid's experiments unusual and distinguished is that he doesn't seek testing his abilities as much as he seeks experimenting with new topics, tools, feelings, and genres that are unfamiliar to the Egyptian film industry. Hamid possesses an extensively auspicious repertoire that extends over 20 years of experience in producing as well as directing films, in addition to directing over 300 commercials, TV drama series, and music videos. Marwan, welcome to Silverline. Um, thank you so much, Abdullah, and thank you so much for this um, um, great, um, I mean, beautiful introduction and for your words. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, would you please tell us more about yourself? How do I start? So, like, uh, um, I'm a filmmaker, and this is the first thing I'd like to describe myself. Uh, my life uh, revolves uh, mostly about um, cinema. Since I was um, at a very young age, uh, I mean, uh, cinema is kind of has been like my my uh, my passion, my hobby. Then became my my dream, my uh, my profession. Uh, I mean, um, the most the most beautiful times of my life is always um, um, related to filmmaking in, in, in general. I, I would say that this is the, the thing that I enjoy most. And um, I come from a family of, of, um, of, um, of, um, of cinema, if I may say. My father, uh, Wahid Hamid, um, um, I mean, the, was, was a great inspiration for me, uh, being a filmmaker, being a writer, and being a producer. Uh, himself, my mother also, um, who is um, uh, a very famous um, uh, TV anchor at some at a, at the moment of her career, and also be, was the um, uh, the president of the Egyptian television. Also, at some point in her career, she was also a great inspiration for me. And this, I mean, coming up in such an environment allowed me a lot to be part of, um, of a very inspiring environment of um, filmmaking. So, um, I mean, this is how I would describe myself, you know, someone that is um, that has a, a life that really revolves around filmmaking and cinema. So as a maker, and considering your very rich background in this industry, do you why do you do what you do? Is it out of obligation or out of the need to continue carrying the torch? Or do you have a creator's itch? I mean, um, it's it's the, the, the real drive is um, uh, I think my, my passion and uh, the, always the sense of urgency that one gets into tell a certain story. And this I think is the, the drive that moves me is that I really um, obsess about the story that I want to tell or the film that I want to make or the project I'm working working on. And, and it really comes to, 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 to that. If I don't feel this sense of urgency and this sense of uh, obsession and the sense of uh, like um, uh, being able to commit to a certain and atta being attached to a certain project that uh, strongly, I don't think I'll I'll be working on it, and I I don't think I'll be I I'll, I'll be wanting to de to to deliver it. So I think it's it's uh, it's it's this kind of um, feeling that there's something inside me, um, uh, whether it's uh, the emotion, uh, the experiment, the film that I really want to show the audience, and I I really want to get it done. Is it the same? 
urgency you have when you want to experiment with your tools because i think we had a, a previous conversation where you talked about how different periods of your career required you to use different forms of technology and different mediums in order to deliver your storytelling so is this the kind of urgency as well that you have to keep experimenting i mean i i think it's part of the joy and part of the uh, um, of the of of the um, of the thrill is to kind of explore and experiment deep, um, I mean, different mediums and different forms and different drones and different uh, different aspects of the creative, I mean, or being a storyteller. And I think this is very important because one of the things that I think um, can be an enemy to any anyone that works in, in my, my profession, whether he's a director, writer, producer, uh, actor even in, is that to fall into the 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 a trap of being like um, living in a comfort zone and kind of uh, reproducing oneself and uh, this is quite quite dangerous because I mean um, like the film industry changes so much the amount of um, of stories. Uh, that have been exposed to, to a wider audience um, are huge, enormous. The audience is so well aware and so kind of, um, I'd say, um, bombarded with a lot of, uh, of stories from all around the world. And there's no barrier in today's world against uh, reaching uh, beautiful stories from all over the world. And at, at the same time, People change. The audience change because the because life is moving very fast around us, and the taste is changing also. So one of the things that you have to be able to kind of um, uh, first of all challenge yourself as as an as a filmmaker or as an artist, and at the same time try to find a way where you can exist in today's world as uh, a, a, a filmmaker. And this needs a lot of um, I'm from my point of view of risk and risk taking, and I think um, I mean every every um, beautiful film that I've watched for any great filmmaker, uh, there's always um, a, a huge risk behind it. There's always something, you know, when you think about it. If I think of myself as an as a, as a viewer and as a, as a as an audience, I really want to go to a movie where I get. Um, kind of surprised in that movie you know and I'm, I'm nobody's really looking for uh, to watch a movie that you have watched before or that you have watched a similar um, 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 or a movie that looks very similar or feels very similar to another uh, film you just want you're always looking for something original and 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 um, that is why some films get are, are are so original that you can watch more than one time and that is why trying to be original trying to experiment i think is something that is uh, that that is has to do a lot with uh, the joy and fun behind what i'm what i'm doing i have so many questions but i'm trying to uh put them in order right now first of all yeah as a filmmaker how do you watch films Um, and it's okay I, to I say on them. your TV. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I, when I watch a film, I watch a film. I watch a film like an, like an, like an audience. I don't. When I watch a film, I don't really get into uh, like how did they do that or what happened here or mm. no. I watch a film like like an audience, and I really enjoy watching a good film. And this is, I think, one of it's a, it's a beautiful time when you get the chance to watch a beautiful film, whether uh, at home or whether in the in the movie theater. So when and well, sometimes I get obsessed about a certain film and I start reading about it, uh, kind of like um, uh, trying to understand how was it achieved, how did they write that, how did they get that kind of uh, uh, performance out of the actors. Uh, what kind of effort did they do? 
Ooh, I mean, if there's something technical that is so impressive, I'd like to know more about it. But the initial, initial, um, um, I mean, or the first time I watch a movie is because I just enjoy it like, like any other audience. The reason why I asked you how do you watch a movie is because obviously we are seeing a shift and that's proven statistically of people watching movies on their uh, devices uh, more so than on screen. Obviously, still people are going to the screen, but there is the comfort of the privacy of home, the privacy of watching it on your uh, mobile devices, etc. So I'm trying to link between that and your urge to experiment. Are you informed by how we consume the medium of film as audiences? Do our um, patterns of behavior on how we consume your stories inform you on how to uh, make them? I mean, every film at the end, um, I mean, um, if it's originally made for the big screen, should will 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 or or the way how i see it i'm not trying to like um uh kind of um put a rule on 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 what is happening today or because i think we are at a time of change and um, there's a lot of room for for experimentation now so i i'm not the kind of uh, person that that um, that has always the right answer so i don't think i have the right answer but what i know is that at the end every film that is done for the big screen will end eventually on a platform or a medium where you would watch it at home or watch it on a on, on a phone or a tablet so would that make me change uh how i make my film i think um i always because this is kind of um what really um, uh, drives me and what I really like very much is to think of the big screen. So I would always think of how to make the film for the big screen. And um, there are so many, so many great films that I watch uh, that I did not get the chance to watch on the, on the big screen that I watched on a tablet or on a, on a phone, um, not, not on a phone, but maybe on a TV, a big, a big TV, sometimes on a mm. tablet. And I, I really kind of like, okay, get, yeah, I mean, like it. I wish they, it was on, on, uh, on, on a bigger screen and that would make a, a, a bigger difference on how you appreciate this, uh, this, this film. So going back to, to, to how would I approach that, I would always think of screening whatever I'm, I'm shooting on a big screen. What are you experimenting with lately? Um, I mean, it's it's. Um, I mean, it, it. I think sometimes you need to gather uh, or kind of become like um, look around you for a while. And when mm -hmm. I say look around you, look around you, not not to look around you as in uh, what is being done in the world in terms of film, as as much as look around you to feel what what is the, what are the stories that are there that need to be told. What are the people out there, the characters that need to be. I mean that we need to express or tell stories about what 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 is missing and what what is missing inside me uh, emotionally that I would like to tell or that I would like to to maybe show show on screen. So I'm in that phase now. I'm in that I'm in I'm in a phase where I'm kind of looking around more than I am in a phase of experimenting. That makes it uh, ever more exciting uh, because you well, always surprise us with the projects that you take on board and they, they're usually very challenging. Uh, so take, for example, your, uh, your talent in adapting novels. Like what attracts you to adapting novels? Because it's not something that's very common in the Arab world yet. Um, I, I mean, um, I, I, when, when I read the novel that I think and I get the feeling that this can be great on screen and I kind of like uh, pre-visualize the film in my head, then I feel that this this novel, I mean, can be a great film. And but what happens first is that I just read the novel first and I love it. At the, and then I spend some time with myself thinking, can this go onto the big screen or not? Can it become a film or not? Is it easily translated? 
transformed from from my I mean when I say easily can it be transformed into um, an interesting script uh, that can create an, an, a film and do I really have this uh, passion towards the novel or not and uh, this is when I think the decision do you find it difficult to balance between your craft as a filmmaker and the commercial expectations from the market or audiences or even from your producers? Yeah, I mean, to, to answer that question, you know, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I always, um, I would always give an example, for example, of uh, like um, a director like uh, um, Al Alfred Hitchcock, for example, mm -hmm. because Hitchcock used to like have a, a very strong relationship <clears throat> with the with the with the audience, you know. I mean, um, and uh, I mean, y you feel how he's directing, and he's he's really kind of um, talking to his to the audience while while directing uh, while directing the film in a way. So there's so much involvement uh, from the audience in the film you know so and that is why he was he was very successful doing that and i think that it is very important to from, from i mean from what i think and this is what i think uh, is closest to my taste is that to think of the audience while you're telling the story so i know why i want to tell that story i know why i want to make that film and then i ask myself another question uh, what would make people want to watch that film what would make people want to continue uh, watching that film? Why won't they leave the the cinema? Uh, I mean, from from the first ten minutes. And then I ask myself another question: uh, What would what what would make the the I mean the audience uh, like kind of get engaged and involved in 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 the film as it goes? But again, there's a very important thing: is that really nobody knows. I mean, nobody really knows for sure what is going to work and what is not going to work. So I do this effort very much. I always have this in mind. But honestly, I don't think anybody really has an answer to that or anybody has an, an answer to what is going to work for sure with the audience or not. I mean, you see like huge blockbusters. I mean, with, um, with, with um, big names, big stars, a lot of... Um, of uh, studio support and in, in in Hollywood, for example, and surprisingly, they don't get or they don't do do well with the audience. They don't get good reviews. I mean, um, I mean, um, despite all this effort done and and so on. So I mean, at the end, I I do what I have to do, and um, but at the, but at the end, I mean, nobody really knows what's going to happen with the film after its release. You only know after it's released in the cinema. What has been your most surprising success? I, I think one of the biggest uh, ch uh, challenges is uh, um, and surprises was the Blue Elephant Part 1. Okay. Blue Elephant Part 1 was a new was a, was a, was a new drawn to to Egyptian and Arab cinema. It wasn't yet explored before. Um, the film was was not a short film. It was like um, almost um, I mean 2 hours 40 minutes. Um, nobody really in had I mean nobody had expectations on whether it's going to work or whether it's not going to work. So, I mean, it was a big, big challenge. It was an expensive film also at the time. So there was a lot of challenge behind that film. And uh, it was a great surprise for us that it, it really did, did that well in theaters back then. And um, I mean, um, yeah, it was a very good surprise. That's fantastic. I, I wouldn't have guessed that answer. I would have said Amarat <laughs> Um. Actually, I mean, with with Amarat Ya'obian, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, the 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 massive success was uh, was 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 very. I mean, it was great at that at that time. But I had a lot of confidence um, that I mean, because the film had a lot of uh, uh, stars involved in it. I mean, the biggest stars in Egypt at the time. 
you know, having the name of a great, um, great actor like uh, Adel Imam, um, a great, a great actor like Nuri Sharif, uh, I mean, Yusra, and all the names that were were linked to uh, Marat Yaqubian gave it, gave it a, a big, um, a, bi a big, uh, or gave it a lot of weight at the time, you know, and a lot of weight that I think, um, although, I mean, at the time, if I remember correctly, it was mo most of the industry was like uh, kind of creating um, comedies most of the time. And I and um, I, I thought that, okay, putting, putting the success of the novel and the, the power of the, the star power that was huge in the film, I thought that that could like help the film, uh, I mean, kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. uh, it exceeded our expectations. That's for sure. I mean, it did exceed um, everyone's expectations. That that is for sure. But I think it had a lot of a lot of weight uh, behind it before it was it was even it was released. Which profession within the film industry uh, would you like to experiment with, other than directing? Uh, per per personally. Yes. I'm, I mean, one of the things is that I like to collaborate with other artists very much, you know, and, and I think that uh, the two professions where we really have a lot of experimenting or the two phases in the film where we really have a lot of um, time and joy uh, is the writing and the editing phase. Mm. Uh, both of them are, the, are, are very interesting. Uh, when it comes to that, and I and I really hear, I mean, I, one of the one of the things that I love about filmmaking is being able to collaborate with other artists and other um, other very talented people. Um, um, I mean, in 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 the industry itself, whether it's the whether a writer, whether an editor, whether the DOP, whether the actors, the the music composer. I mean, these collaborations are very. I mean, are part of the joy of making a film on its own. So if I'd say like the two phases that I like most are the phase, the the, the writing phase and the um, editing phase. And what is the misconception about you that you'd like to correct? Um, I'm, I'm I'm not sure I have an answer to that. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, um, I'm, I think I'm, I'm known through my my work, my films, and um, um, I'd I'd like to be. In the, I mean, I'd like to to be known through my films mostly, and um, I'm not sure that that there's something that I want to. I mean. Um, I'm not sure that I really have an answer to that question. Not a problem. That means there is clarity between you and your audience in a way, which I vouch is true because I'm one of your audience members. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marwan. Marwan, honestly, it's been such a wonderful pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And we can't wait to see what the future holds with uh, your new projects very soon. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.